Hello and welcome to the Origin channel. When playing against higher rank players, if you have a worse card pool than them and less efficient creatures and spells, you will want to win as quickly as possible. Most of the time, you'll want to mount an attack straight away and not rest until you win. If you see that your opponent has dealt with your threats, you can either continue the game or experience or concede and move on to utilize your time effectively. Green and blue decks are known as Simic, and they are more mid-range than red and white variety. To compensate, the deck achieves speed by special combat tricks. Please be aware that it's a little unrealistic to expect to climb to rank 40 with this deck. If you are new to the game, expect to be in the 5 to 10 to 15 level bracket, and if you're a super pro in magic, perhaps you can get to level 30-ish. If you can get any better rank, be sure to send me the vids. In this video I'll be playing against rank 30 to 40 players. This deck prefers as many creatures in hand as possible and needs just 4 mana to roll out properly. In the beginning we play out as many small creatures as we can and try to deal damage. On turn 3 ideally we get the Strider's Harness out to grant haste and buff our other creatures that enter the game next turn. Now let's discuss each card's role in detail. The Thriving Turtle is an excellent 1-drop from Kaladesh that can grow to 1 power and 4 toughness, or even bigger, if it gets the chance to attack. Otherwise, it can block decently early game and ensure we survive aggression to realize our strategy. The Welkin Turn is a 2-power flying creature that essentially has a built-in evasion, making it a good 2-drop for attacking. The Bronze Sable is in the deck as an extra target for Esperzoa's ability, in case the Harness is not in play and can also chump block. Esperzoa is an excellent creature that comes with an ability we'll utilize. At the beginning of the upkeep, you must return an artifact to your hand. This means that if there are no other artifacts in play, you'll have to return Esperzoa itself. So play it out wisely. Another combo for us is to play out the Harness on turn 3, on turn 4 play out as Brazoa, attach a Harness for haste and hit the opponent for 5. Beginning of turn return as Brazoa to your hand and then repeat this combo again for 4 mana. See how it works in the gameplay. The Reclamation Sage destroys an artifact or enchantment and boy. Are there just a few of them in Kaladesh and Aether Revolt? The Thriving Rhino is a decent body for its cost and can grow if it attacks. The Imperial Voyager has only 2 power, making it not the best possible cards for 3 mana in our deck, but we have to take what we can from the starter box. Its upside is flying and for some reason people target it with removal quite a bit. Strider Harness. Once you play with this deck, you will love it. It is perhaps one of the most underrated and underutilized starter cards that I know of. After turn 3, it gives your creatures of choice plus 1 plus 1 in haste for just 1 mana. This is prime value here, and it's definitely the card that gives this 1 turn edge when you barely win against your opponent. Wild Size is another trick we can use to save our key creatures from removal, for Trample to take out opponent's creatures and deal damage to a player, as well as drawing an extra card. Reshed Griff is a card we will use with its Emerge mechanic. Usually after we have attacked an opponent, on the second phase we will sacrifice a 2 or 3 converted mana cost creature to cast out a Reshed Griff. It also has a sizable defense but we are lower on mana than normal, so we will keep only two copies of him. As for the mana pool, we will have 10 islands, 9 forests, 2 hinterland harbors, and 4 woodland streams that come into play tapped. Now that we have discussed the deck, let's play! So, what have we here? We have 3 lands, Two bronze sables, but maybe we can do better. Let's see. 
Mm, two very high cost creatures. I think we'll have to keep this hand. Let's play out an island first. We do have a two color deck, so we have all the mana we need. Hopefully we'll draw something juicy next turn. Let's see, another Blurron Sable, not too bad. Let's cast out the first one. It's the only card we can really play at this stage. Next turn we can go for any of our lands after we attack and get our Thriving Rhino out and try to grow it. Let's see if our opponent has any removal. He has an Idaho Hub and he also has a deck that has more than 60 cards. Let's play out the Thriving Rhino to try and mount the aggression we have started. Alright. Opponent doesn't play anything. This is interesting. So let's go ahead and cast out one land. We don't really have anything that we can cast for more than four mana. Let's grow the Thriving Rhino. And then we have a choice. If he has a sweeper, then we shouldn't play out creatures, but I don't think he has anything. Considering what he has might be, of course, a sweeper like Radiant Flames, but we'll have to risk it for now and try and mount the aggression still. All right, explosive vegetation. So perhaps some sort of ramp. All right, he does have red mana as well, so might have some removal spells. We have drawn even more mana, which is definitely not optimal for us. But we do have quite sizable creatures, and we can use the wild size to draw an additional card and buff our creatures since our opponent is tapped out. We're just going to go ahead and buff, cast it. All right, we have a Strider Harness. Of course, we would have preferred if it had arrived a bit earlier, but that means that if we draw more creatures, this is going to be optimal for us because we can make them hasty with a Strider Harness and our opponent is only at 4 health, so he does need some sort of removal for all the creatures we have in order to survive. And he doesn't. That's it. Game. Alright. We do have a Bronze Sable and a Strider Harness, but this is only one creature. We do have a Wild Size, so let's... Risk it and keep it. Open it plays out uh, white and black. So a lot of removal, including unconditional removal, might be on the table. Let's play out the Bronze Sable, since it's our only 2-drop. Next up, we're gonna play out the Strider's Harness, so that we can get all our creatures to have haste. All right, blue and white once more. Let's play out another forest. Attack first. Not really that many removal spells for black and white in Kaladesh. Try this harness end of turn. One more white source. All right. Let's see. Any spells? Mm, no. But does have something that he can cast in his hand. So, Thriving Rhino will destroy this harness. Is something that to look forward to. Let's equip. And now the Rhino will have haste as well. We're also going to spend the energy 
All right, Blast Alliance. Good news for us as well, because we can sacrifice the Bronze Sable. We will grow the Rhino, and it does become quite sizable. This leaves our opponent at 14. Alright, Suppression Bonds. So, Rhino is not going to be able to attack, but only for one turn, because we do have the Reclamation Sage, as well as the Wretched Glyph. So, I think what we can do is we can cast out the Wretched Glyph with the Emerge, and we can also attach the Harness to it by spending this one extra mana. Let's attach it. Let's swing. This brings down our opponent to 10. Let's see if he has any answers. Perhaps languish. All right. It doesn't seem like he has any, and we're going to take him up on his offer. Let's see. All right. This hand does look quite nicely. We have a turn 1, turn 2 plays, although we cannot cast the Thriving Turtle because our land will come into play tapped. It is still quite nice. Let's go ahead and play it out first. All right, opponent plays out green and white. So now he has three colors out. Red, green, and white. Let's cast out our land. And the bronze sable as our two drop. Because it doesn't look like we will need the thriving turtle to block aggressive creatures from our opponent. Considering his choice of lands at the moment. All right, skips the turn. Let's see, we don't have the mana we need to activate everything else. So we're just going to swing with the Bronze Sable. Let's cast out the Thriving Turtle as well. We do need one more mana for this Tridus Harness. And like I have mentioned before, we would like to finish this game as soon as possible, because the longer we wait, the better cards our opponent has, Evolving Wilds, that he's going to sacrifice. And let's see which kind of basic land he's going to pull. It's going to be black mana. All right, we do have our third land, and it comes into play untapped to boot. So let's go ahead and attack first. Let's grow the turtle. We get in for three, and now we have a choice on which creatures we want to play out. He might have a red in flames to get rid of many creatures. I think it is safer to get the harness out. Alright, Oath of Gideon, so this signals to me that this is going to be a Super Friends deck. More than likely. We now have a Welkin turn, so we have three mana sources. We can play out the Welkin turn, granted haste with a harness as well as plus one plus one, hitting for three damage. Our Thriving Turtle can attack without the danger of it being destroyed. We can also destroy the Oath of Gideon with the Reclamation Sage. Let's go ahead and cast out the Welkin Turn. Attach the Harness to it. And attack with the two creatures we have. Let's see if he blocks. He 
doesn't, this means we're getting 4-4. Four, four. Leaves our opponent at 11 life. Esperzo might be online next turn. Alright, he does have a flying creature that can block now. So the Pilgrim's Eye is going to pull a land into his hand. This is going to be blue mana. So essentially he does have all five colors in his deck. Let's see, what do we want to do? We actually have Wild Sight so that we can buff our Welkin turn when we attack. I think this is what we're going to do. It can buff and grant trample as well as perhaps draw us another land. Let's wait for him to block. Now that he has declared the blockers, let's go for the wild size. Alright, instead of a land we got another wild size, which is not too bad at this stage, when our opponent is down to 6. Opponent might have removal spells. It's going to be Tamio instead. A decent planeswalker. He's going to use the minus ability to tap down our two creatures. Fortunately for him, we have the Stridus Harness that can be attached to other creatures. Alright, we have another Welkin turn. So to be on the safe side, we can cast this Welkin turn, attach the harness to it for haste and attack. He does have one swamp. Let's go ahead and swing. This leaves the opponent at only three life. Alright, our opponent costs Nisa, a decent planeswalker from Kaladesh. Fortunately, it's a little bit late, and it just might not be enough to stop us. He taps down both of our flying creatures using Tamio's ability. But now we have another land, so we can cast out an Esperzo and attach the harness to it. Alright, let's select it. And now we can swing for victory. Good game. Let's see, we do have quite a few creatures, so let's try and keep this hand. We don't have a blue mana source that can come into play and tap, so let's play it out first. It does look like we have a lot of energy creatures. So we might get a chance to see a second win condition of sorts for our deck. Let's cast out one of our turtles. And we can save the bronze sable for an Esperzo in the future. We want to keep it away from removal for now. Second white source. Interesting. Alright. This is going to be a selfless spirit that can be sacrificed to grant indestructible to all the creatures. Okay. 
so we do have a third mana source we also have access to pump now but i think we would prefer to attack first see if our opponent blocks although this is quite unlikely we're going to grow the turtle to one four and then we want to develop our board state opponent doesn't block we get the damage through and now we can play out the Thriving Rhino. Also, we could have some handy energy. One more white mana. Mono white seems a decent possibility. All right, a Renegade Freighter. So now he has a vehicle that he can crew. And we don't really have our reclamation stage to foil this plan, at least for the moment. Alright, the well can turn, but we don't have a stride's harness to make it hasty. So the question is what do we want to play out? And do we want to attack? I think since the Renegade Freighter has Trample, it's pointless to keep the creatures blocking except for maybe the Turtle. We can also use the energy to grow. So we can play out the Bronze Sable and Thriving Turtle. But let's first attack. We will not grow the Turtle. Instead, we'll grow the Thriving Rhino. Opponent doesn't have the ability to block. Let's play out another Thriving Rhino. Right. It does look like our opponent is running Mono White with a lot of creatures. This will be interesting to see if he's going to attack with both of them. He is going to attack with both of the vehicles. And we still have no Reclamation Sage, so let's go ahead and block. Both of the vehicles have Trample. That brings us down to 11. Right, we have an Esper Zoa, but we don't have any artifacts in play. Hmm. He has 10 damage next turn, unless we block. Let's go ahead and attack. We will not grow the Thriving Turtle. We will use the Thriving Rhino to grow. And we're going to cast the Bronze Sable and the Turtle to slow down the damage that he can deal. And use them as meat shields against our opponent. Hopefully he doesn't have removal such as Planner Outburst, but usually decks that have vehicles don't have such thing all right so he does have quite a lot of creatures let's see if he's going to crew the vehicles he does have a selfless spirit that can make his creatures indestructible he probably expects to end everything very soon. All right, he has tapped down all the creatures. We are obviously going to block as much as possible. We cannot really deal with any of these threats. So let's go ahead and block with a turtle. We can block three damage. That leaves us at two life and leaves our opponent exposed. 
and we have with our wild size we just might have enough our opponent is completely tapped out and has probably underestimated us and the price that he will have to pay is the game when we use the wild size grow the thriving turtle I'd like to thank you for watching and see you in the next video.